Here is a quick guide on what is a Wacom Continuous 5 Pro tablet and how to set it up. So in today's video we have a Wacom Ingenius 5 Pro tablet which is actually a graphic pen tablet. You can also say it's a tablet that has pen pressure sensitivity built in and the mouse is being replaced by the pen. Also mostly used by photographers, graphic designers and retouchers and it's compatible with Photoshop and Lightroom. Okay, so simply install the drivers, connect the cable or wirelessly and let's head over to the desktop to the system preferences. Now that we are on our desktop, let's head right away down to the dock and select System Preferences. The same goes again for Windows, just find System Preferences. Then select the Wacom tablet and now you are successfully in the preferences for the Wacom tablet. Now, let's start right away at the top. First of all, the device, again, fully charged and currently connected with a cable, but also has a wireless option again. Then let's head over to the Tools section again. Here you have the functions, meaning the Express Keys, the Touch, and the grip pen, more about that later. Let's start just first of all with the functions. Then also under functions, so right away you get to see the applications. So this means now these applications are installed for only the functions here, only the express keys and touch ring. So let's select Photoshop CS6, Lightroom, and again CC. I'm gonna stick with CS6 for now. Now, under the function tools, first of all, we have a few more options here at the top. Again, these are also self-explanatory, but play a little bit with this in order to change this. Again, remember, there are a million ways how to set up this Wacom tablet for your own preferences. Again, let's start first of all with the express keys and right away start with the first hotkey here also at the top. Again, you have a few options here to choose from. First of all, clicks, keystroke, you can also pan and scroll, scroll up or down, zoom in, you can launch an application, you can also launch the launch pad, again switch between applications, disable, application defined and so on, a few settings that you can choose. I don't want to talk about every single one here. I basically just go with the touch on and off. So for me I can switch quickly between the touch sensitivity. Then the same is going here for settings, precision mode, display toggle. These are pretty much all the standard settings that I keep for now. I also don't have this Wacom tablet set up to the full and maximum capability. For me, it's just set up for the normal basic stuff for Photoshop right now. Let's actually move over to the touch ring, which is more important and uh, interesting for us. So basically on the touch ring, you have four different toggle switches here and in the middle again, the round bar in order to rotate again around. So first of all, I have set up the left toggle switch here is under a keystroke. So let's select keystroke. For me, very important again to have this as my Photoshop brush. So when I'm working with the brush tool in Photoshop, I can quickly change with my wheel here up and down in order to change the sizes of my brush. So for this, I've just added the normal keystrokes which are again obviously on the keyboard opening and closing bracket. So again, put both of these in, rename this to Photoshop Brush so I know what's happening. Hit OK and this is set up. Then for the second one over here, which we also tap toggle around, it's cycling the layers. So again, set over here, keystroke, just to cycle again. This is currently but set up to the zoom. So the bottom one is set up for scroll. Again, this is just normal zoom with the Z key. So zooming in and out on my layer. Again, hit cancel, that is our setup for me. The third one over here is rotate, so I can rotate the complete canvas. Again, this is just set up as a normal standard preference from Wacom tablet. Then the fourth and last one is also set up for me for scroll. So I can really quickly scroll through a ton of layers if I have a lot of layers in my Photoshop file. So again, this is also a basic setting from the Wacom tablet. Great, so these are basically all that I use again just for the toggle and for the touch ring. So again, if I select here the toggle on the screen, you can see it right away jumps between them. So just click on the toggle button in the middle and then use the wheel in order to change the sizes, zoom, rotate or scroll. Then also, I don't want to cover everything here, but you have display toggle. So you can also choose between the displays here, monitor one and two. You have the wireless options here to switch off power saving mode. Again, these are self-explanatory to go through and on-screen controls. If you're interested with this, work a little bit over here and set it up again to your own preferences. I, like I said, just keep it to the standard one. Let's go back to Express Keys and now head over right away to the touch sensitivity. So again, you can also now use your Wacom tablet, the center part here, to work with touch gestures. 
So again, first of all, enable it here. And again, self-explanatory, pointer speed, double tap time, scrolling speed, and pointer acceleration. Play it a little bit and change this if you want. Then over here, standard gestures. Again, a few standard ones, pretty much the same again as Apple devices. You can also have here tap, right click with two fingers. Again, scroll, zoom, rotate. This is very self-explanatory. Just walk through them, hover over it and see what the different gestures do. Or again, if you want to, also your custom ones over here, which you can also set up then again, just for your own finger preferences. But for me, I keep it basically to the standard one and only now and then work with this. So I'll switch this off again. And first of all, move over now to the grip pen, which is very important for us. So now with the pen right away, uh, the tip feel here, Again, the, obviously your Wacom tablet has a pressure pen sensitivity built into the tablet. So this means when I'm with the pen now pressing down onto the tablet, it will also measure how hard I press onto the tablet. So again, if I press really hard, you guys can see it here, it goes right away to the maximum, but then I need to press really hard. So I like kind of try to find the middle uh, place for this, so it's not too hard. So for me, this is like what I would press with. And at the top here, it's set to the second last for me under firm. You can also customize this again for you. Then uh, tip to double click. So basically click, you double tap really quickly onto the keyboard. This means again, double click here. I would not keep this large because then it has a large distance between the clicks and it's very frustrating. So I'll just keep it to off to the basic settings. Again, also the tilt sensitivity. This means again, changing your pen, basically tilting the pen. So I don't, sometimes I do it, sometimes not. So I keep this also in the middle. Then also on the pen again, we have two buttons. Obviously you can also adjust these again accordingly. So you can also tap on here and just choose a new preference here. Mine is set up to right click because I love to go with the index finger and really quickly just click on the back here. So it's right away the right click over here. And then also on the front, the double click. So if I'm too lazy to double click like so, or maybe use this outside of Photoshop or Lightroom, I can easily just hit the front button and it's a double click right there. Then also let's head over to the eraser stage. Again, if you turn your pen around right away at the back, you'll also have again a kind of like a button. This is basically now currently set up just to the eraser. So if you want to, here are also a few options. I kept it to the standard one, which is again eraser. So you can quickly turn the pen around in Photoshop and just erase again. Right on the left hand side, you will also see again here how strong it's also again with the pen pressure sensitivity on the tablet. I also keep this in the middle again, nice and firm, so I can just erase easily. And if I press harder, it goes obviously to the maximum. Now for the last and important part here is the mapping. So first of all, orientation again, express keys left, right, or whatever. If you're a left hand person, then keep it to the left. If you're a right hand person, maybe to the right, whatever is easier for you. I normally keep the pen in my right hand and in the left, my hand is free for the express keys and the keyboard shortcuts. So I like to keep it all set to the left. And then also some people use it with pen. Basically now the pen is right away, your screen and your Photoshop screen is right away set to your Wacom tablet. So you have these four little anchors here on the tablet, which means this is your complete screen. So if I move around now with the pen tool, and go into the left corner, have a look right away on the screen, my mouse is in the left side. So again, it's exactly my screen on the tablet. If I move all the way down to the left corner, right away again, our mouse is in the left side. Let's do that one more time here to the right, again, and in the top part, all the time it is right there on the screen. If I move now to the left corner at the bottom, right away it is in the left corner. If I move back to the right, it's in the top. So you can either work like that if it's easier for you, or if you want to, you can also work with the mouse mode that I use because now I can freely walk around and Photoshop freely in Photoshop because I mostly hold my hand on the tablet and keep it there all the time and just use small areas on the tablet to work and erase and obviously work with the pen tool. And if I use the eraser sometimes or even do small things with the pen tool, I go into the precision mode here with my toggle screen, uh, express keys again. In order to make a very narrow field, and then I can just easily work in there. Let's go back to the grip pen and also show you here a few more options to obviously change everything. I keep everything to fast and high so I can work really quickly here and don't need to do very big strokes on the tablet. Yeah, so that's basically it. Again, under pen tool also, 
you have different monitors. If you set this up for full, one monitor or two, that is totally up to you again. I like to keep this to mouse and to the full screen. Great, so that was a quick introduction how to set this up under your system preferences. Also remember guys, there's a million ways how you can set this up and really customize it for your own needs. But wait, here's a quick warning what you should not do with your Wacom Continuous 5 Pro tablet. Do not keep drinks or any other liquid near. If the liquid runs into the tablet, it's ruined. Do not use the pen all the time, meaning out of Photoshop or Lightroom. They tend to get very worn out and after time the nibs start to get used up really quick. Also keep a USB cable attached permanently, especially when you're working on a fixed workstation. This way your wireless battery stays consistent on the power side and lasts longer when you're working wireless. So guys, that's basically it for this lesson, the quick introduction onto what is a Wacom Continuous 5 Pro tablet. Head over to our bonus section and in the list we've added the link if you want to read up and know more about this for the details. And also, if you want to know directly, go to wacom.com.